Hallelujah, I'm walking with the King. Praise his holy name. Walking with the King. Hallelujah, I'm walking with the King. Every day, I'm walking with the King. Oh, hallelujah, I'm walking with the King. Praise his holy name. Walking with the King, hallelujah, I'm walking with the King, every day I'm walking with the King, oh hallelujah, I'm walking with the King, praise his holy name, walking with the King, hallelujah, I'm walking with the King. Every day I'm walking with the King. Oh, hallelujah, I'm walking with the King. Praise his holy name. Walking with the King. Hallelujah, I'm walking with the King. Every day I'm walking with the King. Well, God bless you. Good morning. Good morning, Sister Gina. Good morning, Lady Holden. God bless you, Bishop and Mother Joseph. Praise the Lord, Sister Perry. God bless you, Sister Riley. God bless you, Marie. Good morning, Mother Howard. Good morning, Jessica. Good morning, Marie. Good morning, Sister Mother Taylor. Good morning, Sister Diaz. Good morning, Missionary Hamilton. God bless you. God bless you, Sister Jan. God bless you, Valencia. Good morning, Deacon and Mother Wilson. God bless you, Angela. Good morning. Good morning, Tara. Good morning, Mother Davis. God bless you, Katina. God bless you, Sister Cheek. God bless you, Sister Nixon. Praise the Lord, Duchess. God bless you, Beverly. Praise the Lord, Sister Robinson. God bless you, Brother Wardlaw. God bless you, um, Jesse. God bless you, Pastor and Lady Alde. Praise the Lord, Sister Walker. God bless you, Katrina. Good morning. Good morning, Burnett. Good morning, Lady Austin. Good morning, Tiana. God bless you. God bless you, Lady White. God bless you, Mother Wilkins. God bless you, Sister Mary. Praise the Lord, Sister Edmund. God bless you, Sister Felix. God bless you, Pastor and Lady Dykes. Good morning. Good morning, Sister Gleam. Good morning, Sister Stacy. Good morning, Sister Annette. God bless you. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Daphne. Good morning, Shanice. God bless you. Good to see you. Good morning. Mary, God bless you. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Good morning. Good morning, Missionary Leah. Good morning, Mother Anderson. Praise God, Minister Scott, for you. God bless you. Evangelist Pettiford, good morning to you. Well, good morning and praise the Lord, everybody. And welcome to the morning prayer with Pastor Reginald Davis. And as always, it's an honor, a privilege, and a pleasure to be able to spend a few moments with you with a biblical meditation and in prayer. For more things have been wrought by prayer than the world will ever know. And I'm excited because God continues to answer prayer and he continues to provide. He continues to provide unexpected favor. God opening up doors. I'm reading, hallelujah, just praise reports of people who are going into internships that normally would be very costly, but they're able to um, obtain the internship without a tremendous loss or tremendous um payment of salary. Praise God for that provision. Praise God for people getting checks they weren't looking for, but God providing, God sending what is needed at the needed time. And so we have a lot to praise God for. We have a lot to thank God for. We have a lot to celebrate. Hallelujah. We have a lot to celebrate what the Lord is indeed doing for us. And so as always, if you have a prayer request, please place it into the chat so that we can add those names to the prayer list, to the prayer book, because we call these names before the Lord. We keep them before the Lord, trusting and believing that God is hearing and God is answering and God is making provision. Yes, God is making provision, opening doors, hallelujah, opening doors, making ways and answering our prayers. And praise God, I, I'm just a witness to God's ability to answer prayer. If your prayer request is of a private nature, please feel free to inbox me, Reginald Davis, or inbox the Refuge Temple inbox so that we can once again add those names to the prayer list and to the prayer book because we are trusting and we are believing and we are focused 
on what we know that God is able to do. Yes, saints, God is able. I know some of you hear me say that often because I believe it. I believe that God, I don't think there's anything too hard for God. I don't think there's anything that God can't do. I don't think there's anything that God cannot fix. And I am trusting, hallelujah, the divine providence of what I know that God can indeed will do for us. So send those prayer requests in and let's go before the Lord through the word today. You can, we're going to go back to second or first Thessalonians, excuse me, first Thessalonians. And I want to focus in on verses four through nine, second Thessalonians chapter two, verses four through nine, second, Thess I'm sorry, first, forgive me, first Thessalonians chapter two, verses four through nine, please forgive me. Um, let's look at verse number four. But as we were allowed of God to be put in trust with the gospel, even so we speak, not as pleasing men, but God, which tried our hearts. For neither at any time use we flattering words, as you know, nor a cloak of covetousness. God is witness. Nor of men sought we glory, neither of you nor yet of others, when ye might have been when we might have been burdensome as the apostles of Christ. But we were gentle among you, as a nurse cherisheth her children. So being affectionately desirous of you, we were willing to have imparted unto you not the gospel of God only, but also our own souls, because ye were dear unto us. For, for ye remember, brethren, our labor and travail for laboring night and day, because we would not be chargeable unto any of you. We preached unto you the gospel of God. We preached unto you the gospel of God. I want to use for a thought this morning. Can you be trusted? Can you be trusted? This is clergy appreciation month. And I want to begin by celebrating the many pastors that um, take the time to be a part of prayer each morning, celebrate District Elder and um, Lady Alde celebrate Bishop and Mother Joseph. We celebrate um, Pastor and Lady Winston. We celebrate Pastor and Lady Newkirk. We celebrate Pastor and Lady Dykes and um, every pastor, Pastor Ivan Hargrove from Alberta, Virginia. Um, just B Bishop, I'm sorry, Pastor David Morton from Oxford, North Carolina. And, they, and there are others that join us each day, um, join us periodically. And I thank God for um, these men and women of God who share themselves with congregations. And if you are a member of a congregation and you are blessed with a faithful pastor, a faithful first lady, a faithful first family, I hope that you take time in this month to celebrate and recognize them. Because um, the ministry is without question, one of the most challenging endeavors that one can undertake. And, and, and because it's challenging, there are some people that abuse it, some people that use it, some people that um, um, have the wrong notion about it. You know, some people look at ministry from their seat and they see it as very easy. You know, you just get up and, you know, holler for about 30 minutes once a week and, you know, people do this for you or they do that for you or they do the other for you. They call you um, pastor. They bring you things as, as, and people see that sometimes and that's all they see. Um, but those of us who are laboring in ministry know that it is such so much more than that, that it taxes every part of your life, your um, every part of your existence, your intellect, your wisdom, your um, just everything, everything. And I, and, and I, please understand, I am not complaining because I am honored. I'm honored to be a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Um, this is not something that, praise our God, I could have done alone, but it was God and it was God working and God moving and God operating in so many different areas of life to allow us to be able to share in the ministry. And so 
it is an honor for me. It's a privilege for me. And, and I hope for those of you who are in ministry and, and I hope that for those of you who are a part of this great gospel, that you're seeing the Lord do something in your life. You're seeing God working on your behalf. You're seeing God um, continue to um, use you. And so as, as people celebrate and recognize and remember whatever it is that you're doing for the kingdom, I'm praying that God is doing something wonderful through you, that God is helping you to share and helping you to do what needs to be done so that souls can be saved, lives can be changed. And, and so it's an honor, but it's also a sacred responsibility. I'm going to say that again. Ministry is a sacred responsibility. It's not something that you just do to be doing. It's not just like picking any other kind of job to do. It's a sacred trust that God would indeed look upon your life and, 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 and decide to use you to carry the gospel of Jesus Christ. No matter what your title is, if you have been um, chosen by God, if you have been chosen by God to lead the people of God, then that is a place of blessing, but it's also a place of sacred responsibility. And so I asked the question today, can you be trusted because one of the one of the realities and and this is not I'm not trying to be critical of anybody I'm not trying to be harsh with anybody but one of the realities of ministry is that there are so many people that are in ministry for the wrong reasons they they, they got in ministry because they didn't want to work um, a, a secular job and they thought they could just preach and the people would bring them tithes and offering and take care of them and they could just lay in the house and except on Sundays and Wednesdays and a few revivals here and there and they thought that was all there was to ministry and 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 and, and if they're doing it for real they've discovered that it's much more than that some people sought ministry because they like the praise of people. They like hearing people say, amen, pastor, amen, evangelist. They like hearing people clap as they talk or um, yell as they talk. And so they do it so that they can get attention. Some people minister just because they see it as a way of getting the undivided attention of individuals. And so th th there's a lot of reasons why people go into the ministry. I wish it was all so that we could preach the gospel. That ought to be the reason. That ought to be the reason. But the question, once again, can you be trusted because if you are indeed called to ministry, if you have indeed been called to ministry, then God is entrusting you with at least two things. God is entrusting you with at least two things. He's entrusting you with his word. Listen to me. He's entrusting you with his word and he's entrusting you with his people. And he holds both of these things as sacred. God holds his people as sacred because they're his people. Oh God, the saints that God allows you to labor with, to work with, to minister to, they're not yours. I, I know I, I sometimes we all say stuff like my people, my congregation, my church. But guess what, my friend? You didn't die for anybody. I didn't die for anybody. The church was purchased by the blood of Jesus Christ. The church was purchased by the precious blood. The sinless sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ is what brought the church into being. And so knowing that, that means I can't claim them as mine, but I've been entrusted as a steward in the house of God. I've been entrusted with the souls, with the minds, with, the, with, 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 with even the protection of those that come come and worship and join. We have been, that's, that's a sacred trust. It, it, it's just like somebody leaving their child with you to take care of or to care for, for a day or two, or uh, God forbid something happened to them and they have willed their children into your hands. It's a sacred trust. The Lord telling us, he told Peter, do you love me, Peter? And Peter said, yes, I do. He said, then feed my lambs. Do you love me, Peter? He said, yes, Lord, I love you. Then feed my sheep. Do you love me, Peter? Yes. And by that time, Peter was grieved because the Lord asked him three times. And when you ask somebody the same question three times, it, it usually indicates that you really don't trust their answer. And, and he said, Lord, you know that I love you. Then he said, then feed my sheep. So if you love Jesus, if you love Jesus, this is important because you've got to love Jesus more than you love the sheep. Oh, God. Let me say that again. You have to love Jesus more than you love the sheep, because if you love the sheep more than you love Jesus, then guess what? 
Guess what? You will compromise for the sake of the sheep. You will compromise for the sake of the of, of, of the group. You will compromise for the sake of the of those you're trying to please. But if you love Jesus more than you love the sheep, you will always put him first. You will always make the gospel and the word of God your primary responsibility because that's the other thing he's entrusted you with. He's entrusted you with the people and he's entrusted you with the word. Let me say it again. He's entrusted you with the word because if you have the, the call of ministry upon your life, you have been given the word of God. It is not your curriculum to manipulate the way you want to. Let me say that again. The word of God is not your curriculum. You didn't write it. You didn't prescribe it. You didn't dictate it. It didn't come from your intellect. It didn't come out of your spirit. It is the word of the living God. And if it's the the word of the living God, then the charge of the minister, the charge of the missionary, the charge of the believer that is going to share the word is to share the word just like God gave it. Don't dress it up. Don't try to manipulate it. Don't try to mishandle it, but give people the word that God has given already. He's not writing a new edition. I know we get new translations of the scripture, but the word has already been established forever in heaven. Thy word is settled. God has already settled the word in glory. It's already been settled in heaven and he doesn't need you playing around with the word. Yes, you should study. Yes, you should read. Yes, you should pray. But when it comes to delivering the word, don't compromise the word. The question today is, can you be trusted? Can you be trusted to take the gospel that Jesus gave you and preach it just like he gave it to you? Can you be trusted to care for the people of God as if they have been entrusted to you by God because they have. Can you be trusted with the souls of dying men and women to help them find Jesus, to help them walk in the blessings of God, to help them walk in true discipleship? Can you be trusted? Oh, hallelujah. Can you be trusted? That is a critical question. And that's the question that Paul is trying to answer in this text. He says, but we were allowed of God to be put in trust with the gospel. In other words, God trusted us with his gospel. Even so we speak, not as pleasing men, but God. Not as pleasing men, but God. I'm not, Paul says, in other words, I'm not here so you'll be happy with me. I'm here because I want Jesus to be happy with me. I'm here because I want the Lord to say well done. Oh, hallelujah, thy good and faithful full servant. Oh, he said the Lord trusted us. He put in us the trust, oh God, to carry the gospel. Hallelujah. He put the trust not to please men, not to satisfy people, not for the praise of men, but God. I'm trying to please God. Oh, hallelujah. Oh God, I, I said it before. I'll say it again. Morning prayer is me acting in obedience to God. I didn't look for it. I didn't want it. I wasn't trying to make it happen, but the Lord spoke to me and guess what? I almost had a Jonah moment where I wanted to do what I wanted to do, but thank God for the conviction of the Holy Spirit. So this is not, oh God, about Pastor Davis. This is about God and me wanting to please God and me wanting to be obedient to God. And I thank God for the blessing of morning prayer, but I thank God for the blessing of obedience. For And, and, and then this is important because, you know, the minister is probably one of the most accused people. It, it's funny. I think preachers get accused more than politicians. I'm going to say that. I think preachers get accused more than politicians. You know, we the politician we know is, is going for the vote. He's going for the donation. He's going for the contribution. But the preacher is always accused. The preacher is always suspect. The preacher, and, and it's amazing that the ones that are crooked, don't ever get accused, but it's the ones that are trying to do what's right that sometimes find themselves always under the in, in, in the sights of people who question their motives and question what they're trying to do. But Peter says, I need, uh, Paul says rather, I need you to understand that we did not come with flattering words. We didn't come to flatter you. We didn't come to blow your head up. We didn't come to try to entice you with slick words so you would follow us, nor did we come with the cloak of covetousness. Oh God, it's 
so important, preachers. Oh, God, listen to me, preachers, men and women of God, everybody that carries the word. You can't be motivated by the dollar. Yes, people should bless you. Yes, people should bless the ministry. Yes, people should tithe. Yes, people should sow into what God is using to feed them. But that's not why you do it. That's not why you do it. Oh, God, I've walked away from churches with nothing in my pocket. I've walked away from churches and gave more than they were able to give back to me. I've walked away from churches and they offered me nothing. Oh, hallelujah. But it wasn't that. And I've never in my 44 years of preaching, I've never asked a church for a dollar amount. I've never asked a church to give me anything. I've always trusted God that if I do the work of God, they will in turn do what is right by those that serve. And I'm thanking God that I can celebrate the fact that God has always made a way. God has always provided. God has always opened the door, even if I have to work. I tell you before, I'm heading to work when I get finished with prayer because I'd rather have God take care of me. Oh God, than me feel like I'm reaching and grabbing for this and that because I don't want to operate in covetousness. I'm not done. I got to come back to this tomorrow. My time is gone. But the question God is asking all of us, all of us, all of us who are engaged in ministry, can you be trusted? Can you be trusted? Come on, my brothers and sisters. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. My gracious God, Lord, I love you. I praise you. I adore you. I thank you for another day of goodness and mercy that you have sent to me. I thank you for being able to wake up this morning. I thank you for my right mind. I thank you for the ability to move and to go about my business of the day. Thank you that I can know, God, what day it is, know where I am and what I'm doing. God, I thank you for all of that. I don't take it for granted. Oh, God, thank you for the blessing of a right mind. Thank you, God, for the mind to pray. Oh, God, to seek your face for the needs that we have, because yes, Lord, our needs are great. Oh, God, seeking you, God, for provision, seeking you for open doors, seeking you for making a way, for delivering, for touching, for strengthening. Lord, for all of these things, we seek you, God. We seek your knowledge. We seek your wisdom. We seek your profound ability, God. We seek your power. Oh, God, this morning, we seek your grace. My God, for our, oh God, insufficiency, God, and for our deficiencies, Lord, even for our, our mistakes, our trespasses, God, Lord, give us grace today, God. Oh, give us your power to walk and to live and to abide in your presence today. God, I thank you this morning for my brothers and sisters who have joined me from all over the world. So many, my God, oh God, I thank you for them today. Thank you for their perseverance. Thank you for their faithfulness to prayer. And God, I'm lift up today, Lord, whatever their needs are, whatever their petitions are, whatever their desires are, God, I lift up to you, God, the names of their children, their grandchildren, their precious loved ones in their lives. My God, that they're interceding and praying for. And Lord, I'm asking you, God, to grant every request. I'm asking you to grant every petition. I'm asking you, God, to stretch out your hand. Oh, God, your your arm is not too short that it cannot save. My God, your ear is open to our cry. Some are praying for spouses. Some are praying for children, grandchildren, nieces and nephews, loved ones, family and friends. But God, you know the needs and you know the conditions and you know the situations. My God, and we trust you now, God, to be the deliverer, the savior, the healer, the provider. Oh God, the way maker. Oh God, the heart fixer today. Oh God, touch Touch hearts today, God. Touch minds today. Oh, God, send a mighty deliverance upon every heart and mind today. God, we lift up the names that are on the prayer list, the names that are in the prayer book, God, and we're praying for them. Every name in the chat, every name, my God, that's been sent by text or messenger or email. God, we're praying for them this morning and we're lifting them up before you. My God, we're praying today. Hallelujah. 
for Devante, for Zaire. We're praying for D'Angelo. We're praying for Marcus. We're praying for Betty Lewis today, for Candace Ford, for Carmina. We're praying for Lamont. We're praying for Josephine. We're praying for Lily, for Reuben, for Caleb, for Latrice. We're lifting up Olivia today, Jennifer, Jeremy, Sean, Tyler, LaShawn. We're praying, oh God, for Diana Williams, oh God, and her sons and grandchildren. We're praying for the Diaz family, the Lovett family, the Bates family, the Dickerson family, God. We're praying, oh God, for the Harris family, the Scott family, the Edwards family, the Nicholson children and grandchildren. We're praying for Muriel Blackwell. We're praying for the Zimmerman family, the Moore family. We're praying for Ann King. We're praying for Roberta Jenkins. We're praying for Larry McMillan and his family. We're praying for the Hinton brothers today, God. We're praying for the Robinson family. We're praying for Judy, for Gus, for Andre, for Melvin, for Dean, for Thelma, for Laura, the Laura family. We're praying for the Coleman family, God. We're praying for the Downs family, the Fernandez family, the Jones family, the Bethea children and grandchildren. We're praying for Melody. D. White. We're praying for Tanel, Bathia, and her family. We're praying for Greater Refuge Temple today. God, we're praying for every unspoken request. God, things that we can't share and articulate, but God, the needs are great nonetheless. Oh, God, would you stretch out your hand? Would you stretch out your arm? Would you open eyes and open hearts and open minds? God, somebody's outside of the ark of safety, but we trust you, God, to bring them in. We're praying, oh God, for every backslider today. I'm praying for every person, oh God, that wants and needs the baptism of the Holy Ghost. God, that you would baptize them with the power, my God, from on high. Lord, fill them now, even as we're praying and they're joining us in prayer. Lord, baptize and fill them with the power and the presence of the Holy Ghost. God, I'm praying for healing today for the sick, Lord, everywhere. We're praying for Diana Williams. We're praying for Mother June Dixon. We're praying for caregivers everywhere. We're we're praying for Deacon James Grant. We're praying for Sarah Corden, God. We're praying for Cheryl today. We're praying for those suffering from cataract, cataracts. Rather, We're praying for Justin today. We're praying for anybody suffering from kidney disease, any dialysis patients, any cancer patient, God, any heart patient. My God, Lord, you're a healer now. Anybody suffering from high blood pressure, diabetes, arthritis, bursitis, oh God, neurological conditions. God, we trust you, God, to be the healer of every manner of disease. God is not beyond you. We're praying, oh God, for Paul. We're praying for Latanya. We're praying for Beatrice today. We're praying for Elder Spain. We're praying for Kenny Meadows, God. We're praying for Mrs. Oh God, Bahari today. We're praying for Sister Mooney, God. We're lifting up Mother Shirley Clark. We're praying for Bishop Alfonso Brooks today. God, we're praying. Hallelujah for Mother Evangeline Jenkins, Lady Andrea Maxwell. God, we're lifting up Pastor Dykes, God, Pastor Carr, and Pastor Jackson. We're praying, my God, for Elder Smith and Elder Tyson today. My God, we're praying for Brother Wiggins. We're praying, hallelujah. Oh, God, we're praying for Brother and Sister Sherrod. We're praying for Deacon, oh, God, and, oh, God, and Mother Garland today. We're praying, my God, for Mother, oh, God, Foster, Henry J., Brother Cliff, Lord. We're praying, my God, for Mother, oh, God, Holman, Mother Tanaj. We're praying for Sister Simmons today. We're praying for Mary Swinton right now. In the name of Jesus, we're praying. Oh, hallelujah for Catherine, for Cynthia, for Duchess today. God, we're lifting up every sick person everywhere, in every hospital, every nursing home, every rehab center, my God, every cancer ward, every COVID ward. God, we're praying for Maurice today. We're praying for Marlette today. We're praying, oh God, for Chris today. Everybody that needs the touch of healing, Lord, stretch out your hand, my God, in heal. Oh, God, we're praying for grieving families everywhere. We're praying for the Moore family, the Phillips family, the Parker family. We're praying for Sister Glean's cousin today. We're praying for Diana Williams. We're praying for the Terry family, the Giotti family. We're praying for the Levi and Byers family. We're praying for Sister Scott today. We're praying for the Allen family. We lift up, oh God, Pastor Susie Wright and her family. We pray for Roberta Jenkins today, the Gentry family. We pray for Margaret Speller and her family. We pray for the Robinson family. We pray for Dover Elementary School today, God. We pray for the Fushi family. We pray for Ann Kelly and her family. We pray for Deborah Condrington, God. We pray for Elder Smith, Lord, and his family. God, every grieving household everywhere, God. We lift up the Allen Williams family, and we pray for Trell and Ryan. We pray, my God, for the Clark family. Remember Tommy and Michelle. God, we're praying, oh God, for the Boodrums, the Mannix, the Felix family, God. We're praying for the 
Melissa Potters. My God, we're praying for every grieving heart everywhere. We're praying for the Taylors and the Lloyds. We're praying for the Carters today. Oh God, we're praying, oh God, for the Brian Hopkins family, Lord. Oh God, we're praying. Oh Shanae, Shanamasia. We're praying, oh God, for grieving people everywhere. We're praying, oh God, for Brenda Allen and the Allen McNeely family. God, we lift up the Giles family today. We pray for the Bankses. We pray for the Washington Fields family. We pray for the McLean Melvin family, God. We pray, my God, for families everywhere. We pray for the Gary Porter family, Lord. We pray, my God, for the Mays. We pray for the Dunlaps. We pray, God, for everyone that is grieving a loss today. Oh, God, every grieving widow and widower. My God, every grieving, hallelujah, child, every grieving parent, every grieving person for a loved one, God, strengthen them now. Sustain them now. Keep them now. Shelter them, oh God, from depression in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we pray for your delivering power right now. God, I pray for the body of Christ today. Every apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher, every bishop and elder, every first lady, every pastor's child. My God, we pray, my God, for every, oh God, mother and missionary. God, we pray for every minister and deacon, every young person in the church. God, we pray for every musician, singer, and psalmist. God, we pray for the totality of the body of Christ. Help us, my God, oh God, to be trustworthy people that whatever the call, whatever the assignment, whatever the work, God, we can be trusted, oh God, with the word. We can be trusted with the hearts of the people. We can be trusted, oh God, to act and move in integrity. God, strengthen the church now. Help us to be righteous. Help us to be holy. Help us to be sanctified. Oh God, forgive us of our shortcomings, but God, help us to come up higher and help us to do what you have called us to do. God, I'm praying for the nations today. I'm praying for Trinidad, Tobago, St. Lucia, St. Kitts, Grenada, the Dominican Republic, God. I'm praying, my God, for Jamaica. I'm praying for Canada, for Mexico. I'm praying, my God, oh God, for the United States, every nation on under the sun. God, I'm praying, oh God, that you would touch now. Oh God, the land is so sick. Oh God, the people are so sick. My God, there's perversion everywhere. But God, we trust you to deliver. Lord, let the church lead the way in repentance. Oh God, so that men and women can come, oh God, to you and be saved. And so that you can heal the land. God, heal the land. Oh God, heal the land today. Oh God, remember first responders, essential workers. Remember students and teachers and school employees. God, remember, my God, hospital employees. Remember everybody that labors in the public. God, cover and protect them, God. Lord, bring these numbers down. Keep bringing them down, God, and bring healing in the land. Oh God, bless us today. Keep us. Keep our hearts, our minds, our souls, and our bodies. Protect us and go with us today and make our day fruitful, God. And as you do this, we give your name the glory, the honor, and all the praise. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Oh, come on, everybody. Give God praise. Come on. Let's thank the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Come on. Let's thank the Lord. Let's thank the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's thank the Lord because he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for he is good. Hallelujah. And his mercy, my God, endures forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is my declaration today. Hallelujah. Oh God, hallelujah. Lord, make me trustworthy. Hallelujah. Lord, make me trustworthy. I don't want to be shady. I don't want to be in the shadows. I don't want to do stuff with duplicity. Lord, make me trustworthy. Hallelujah. I want to be able to be trusted by you. Hallelujah. With the word, with the people, with assignments. Lord, I want to be able to to be trusted. I want to be found. We used to say this in the old church. I want to be found faithful. Hallelujah. I want to be found faithful. I want you, Lord, to be able to trust me that if you give me an assignment, God, I will carry that assignment out, oh God, to the best of my ability. God, that I will trust you for the anointing, that I'll trust you for power. I'll trust you even for resources. God, make me trustworthy. Make me trustworthy. Make me somebody that can be trusted to carry on the work of God. God bless you today. Thank you so much for being with us. I hope that the prayer and the word has blessed you and that your Tuesday is off to a wonderful start. Thank you so much for being with us each day. You can stay connected to Refuge Temple 
all day today. This prayer service is available on Facebook, YouTube, and will be available and Instagram. And you can access them 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You can also listen to our podcast. It airs on Google Podcasts, SoundCloud, Spotify, Hallelujah, and Apple Podcasts. And once again, it's available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And you can be a part of that. And if any of this blesses you, please, please, my brother, my sister, share it with somebody else. Please share it so that someone else can hear the word and be blessed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Our radio broadcast airs every day, Monday through Friday at 11.30 a.m. on GregoryGospel.com. Every day, Monday through Friday at 11.30 a.m. on GregoryGospel.com. The station owner called me yesterday to tell me how many people listen to the radio broadcast each day. And I'm thanking God that the word is going forth and we're praying that the word would bring forth fruit. So join me in prayer that those that hear the broadcast would come to know the Lord. Those that hear the broadcast would be blessed of God and strengthened out of the word of God. I want to thank every single person who sows and shares and gives to this ministry. God knows we appreciate it. It is blessing us to bless others is blessing us to carry out the things that God has placed into our hands. And if you want to be a blessing, you can certainly mail a gift to Refuge Temple Church, P.O. Box 3552, Burlington, North Carolina, 27215, P.O. Box 3552, Burlington, North Carolina, 27215. You can also give electronically on our website, Refuge Temple NC.com, Refuge Temple N is in North, C is in Carolina.com. Or you can give through Givelify if you have that app. Just type in Refuge Temple Burlington and you'll see a picture of the church and you can make your gift. Or you can give through the cash app that is dollar sign the number one refuge, dollar sign the number one refuge. And I thank you. I thank you so much for what you share with this ministry. And God bless you according to your faith and your faithfulness. But look, most of all, I'm so appreciative of everybody that joins each morning in prayer. Your presence is blessing the nations. Yes, your presence in prayer is blessing the nations. So keep coming, tell others about it, share with other people so they can experience what the Lord is doing for us each morning in morning prayer. Thank you for praying for me. Please do keep doing that. Keep praying for me. Keep praying for Lady Davis. Keep praying for my children. Keep praying for my dad. Keep praying for Refuge Temple and keep praying for all the churches that are connected that God would continue to bless. We're trying to do the work of God. We're trying to do what God has called us to do. And we are trusting God for the strength and the ability and the anointing to do what needs to be done. Look, have a fantastic day. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you. Until next time, this is Pastor Davis. Shalom, shalom.